up you guys welcome back to another one if you are new to the channel i am gold pony i do new car truck SUV reviews on youtube and today we are in the all new 2022 bmw ix courtesy of apple bmw in york pa for more information on their inventory please feel free to check out the link in the description box below and so obviously we are in this one today because it is an all new model from bmw it is an all electric model in suv form gotta love that as well and typically the next question is well what's the warranty on the battery the warranty on the battery is the standard eight year 100,000 miles that typically every other electric car company is doing right now so that's plenty fine you also of course have very unique styling in this thing both inside and out and this essentially is going to be the tesla model x competitor so ultimately in this video we will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking steering full ride quality sound system all that fun stuff so having said all of that what do you guys say let's just go ahead and jump right into it and as always Let's start with pricing it. So MSRP will start at $83,200 for the xDrive 50i. I put it that way because that is the only one available right now. There is going to be an M version coming later down the line, but that is not currently out. So obviously I'm not gonna be commenting on that one today. In addition to that, I did wanna also mention there is a federal tax credit, at least here in the US, available for up to $7,500. So that is pretty nice as well. But so then when it comes to the power plant of the iX, powering the beast is dual electric motors producing 516 horsepower 564 pound feet of torque sent to all four wheels this is all wheel drive only zero to 60 time is going to come in at approximately 4.4 seconds top speed 124 miles per hour range is going to come in at up to 324 miles it actually depends on what particular wheel configuration that you go with and i'll touch a little bit more on that later in the video but did want to also mention that when it comes to charging with the dc fast charger you can actually get up to 90 miles with only a 10 minute charge which is extremely impressive as well that more than likely is going to get you where you need to go maybe home so that you can actually charge this thing when you get home then so that's pretty cool but then before we do any kind of fun acceleration test here in our new ix i wanted to mention to you guys the drive modes it's actually labeled my modes it's just behind the crystal circular dial crystal yes there's plenty of crystal in this car which is pretty cool but anyways that will include sport efficient and personal adjusting things like the throttle response the steering sensitivity and and in some cases, the fake V8 engine noises as well, which is pretty cool. So anyways, let's go ahead and play around with my modes here. I'm in personal right now. I'm gonna put it in sport and let's put this thing to the test. We're gonna do a quick little acceleration and let's see how quickly we can get our new 2022 iX here up to speed. All right, you guys are about to hit our straightaway. Before we get started here, listen to the sound when I hit the gas. I've heard a lot of electric cars, but this thing really, really sounds like a fighter jet in three, two, one. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Ow. <laughs> Holy cow. That was ridiculous. Wow. That was amazing. That was like, whew. Do you feel it in your gut? I'm telling you guys, once you start driving electric cars, when it comes to the acceleration at least, there's no comparison. Like I had a Ford Mustang, heavily modified, that on, on stock did zero to 60 in 3.9 seconds. So on paper, the iX does it in 4.4 seconds. Like I was saying, it feels so much quicker than that. It feels like 3.5 almost or even less. This thing is ridiculously fast when it comes to acceleration. I can't emphasize that enough. And not to mention again, it sounds like a fighter jet. When you're first hitting the gas pedal, I don't even know what to call it. It's not a gas pedal, obviously. When you're first hitting the pedal, and it feels like a fighter jet when you're first hitting the pedal. I keep wanting to call it a gas pedal, but this is an all electric vehicle, so obviously I can't say that. But anyways, I was breathtaking to be exactly precise there. But anyways, to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. So of course you will find a high performance, lightweight brake system coming standard. There's also one pedal drive mode as well, as with most electric vehicles out right now, essentially, that means is uh, you never have to actually hit the brakes more or less. You can simply just let off the gas and the vehicle is gonna automatically come to a stop for you. I love that in electric vehicles because it saves you on your brake pads. And it's something I always turn on whenever I'm test driving an electric vehicle. So that is definitely very nice as well. As far as braking feel goes, it's been perfectly fine. And again, with that one pedal driving mode, you're really not gonna have any issues with the braking. That touching on suspension and handling. Up front, you're gonna get a double wishbone type front suspension. In the back, independent five link rear axle, but also lift related dampers as far as ride quality goes it's been wonderful it feels like a super luxurious ride and not to mention touching on cabin noise 
this thing's super quiet. I'm driving right now. The only thing you really get is when you hit the pedal, it's kind of like that fighter jet kind of sound when you get to the acceleration, which is brilliant. I would never change that, but this thing is ridiculously quiet and so much quieter than any of its internal combustion counterparts without a doubt. So I absolutely love that. As far as steering feel goes, it is a little bit heavier of a weight when you put it in sport driving mode. I wouldn't have minded if the steering feel was a bit heavier because I remember that Tesla Model Y I reviewed a few months ago and I know the X is a much lighter steering feel. I haven't driven that one yet, but that's what I've heard. But the Tesla Model Y had an amazing steering feel. So if BMW you can maybe borrow a little bit of that and put it in the iX. I think that would be wonderful. Not that it's a loose steering feel, it just feels like a regular SUV basically. So I wouldn't have minded if at least there was a driving mode that really firmed up the steering feel in this thing, made it a little more fun and playful, even though we're in kind of a larger SUV. But that's just my preference, I guess. Then touching on visibility, I, that was probably the first thing I noticed when I got into this thing. The visibility isn't the best if you're comparing it against all the other SUVs, I guess, in its class. I mean, it's not horrible. The second row headrests are kind of beefy and it seems like that rear window is kind of smaller comparatively speaking to the competition i guess you could say it's not bad i'm sure it's something you would get used to but i'm just saying it's not the best but anyways rain sensing windshield wipers do come standard on the ix as well and if you wanted a head-up display it can be had with either the convenience package which goes for twenty three hundred dollars and includes a heck of a lot more as well or the premium package which goes for four thousand dollars and also includes a heck of a lot more so there is a head-up display available we do have it and it is super high def it's giving me my speed, speed limit, and safety features illuminated up on my windshield, so that's pretty cool too. But that pretty much rounds out the performance segment of this review, you guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2022 BMW iX. All right, so here she is, you guys, the new 2022 BMW iX. This thing is absolutely insane. Such unique styling. First thing I want to mention is it's made from aluminum space frame and carbon core technology with exposed carbon fiber, reinforced side frame and rear, which to be fair, BMW has done before, but of course they carried it onto the iX as well. It's actually about the same size as the X5. The iX is 195 inches long. X5 is 194.3 inches. So if you're looking for a size comparison, that is where it's going to come in at. Let's go ahead and start up front on the iX here. Kidney front grille that doubles as an intelligence panel with sensor technology, a very cool design and self-healing, BMW says as well. Let me go ahead and get up a little bit closer here. BMW says essentially if you have some kind of a rock chip or something in this front grille, which may or may not happen, because of the technology, I'm not sure exactly how it works, but it is supposed to heal itself and kind of diminish over time, which is crazy. I think that is a crazy feature. We'll have to see. Time will tell if that actually works, but that is a pretty cool little thing though. Do wanna also mention though, what front sport package is gonna add some additional body colored accents on the front fascia here, as opposed to what we would find otherwise. We actually do not have that sport package. So we got the matte black bottom trim on our particular iX. Again, if you go with the sport, a lot of that is going to be body colored. Not all of it, but a good extra portion of it will be body colored, so I wanted to mention that. Touching then on those headlights, they are slim twin LED headlights with the automatic feature, of course. Also coming with that, the automatic high beams, meaning if you have your high beams on at night and it senses a vehicle coming in the opposite direction, it's going to automatically dim those back to low beams. Then when that vehicle is gone, it's going to automatically bump it then back up to high beams, which is pretty cool. LED daytime running lights. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the uh, unlock button again here, see if we can get those back on. Of course, they look pretty darn good. And I like how they fade on. You guys saw that. That is pretty cool as well. I like that little feature. And there actually is adaptive front lighting with laser light technology that goes for $1,000. Essentially, when you're going around the bend at night, those headlights are going to swivel based on the direction of your steering angle better help illuminating what is around that bend if you were to go with those adaptive headlights so overall a very very unique front end unlike anything else you see on the road so of course resembles a bmw with that front grill i don't even know if you can call it a front grill and honestly electric cars don't even need a front grill so anyways it is there nonetheless but that pretty much rounds out the front end of this one let's not go ahead and make our way to the side and so but now since we are around to the side of this one you will find either gloss black chrome belt line molding or a satin chrome belt line molding dependent upon the configuration that you go with 
of the IOX. We obviously have the gloss black and the same goes for the door handles as well. It's going to differ. Floating roof line towards the back. You can see that on the C pillar. It actually has IX inscribed onto the portion that breaks up the C pillar there. So that's pretty cool. Rear privacy glass does come standard as far as the door handles go. Since there's aren't actually door handles, there's a little rubberized button on the top portion. So you simply just slide your hand up underneath of the door handle, press the button and then pull the door open. So that's how you're going to go ahead and open it up. As far as the charging port goes, you guys can see that that is going to be located on the passenger side of the IX. Body color, power adjustable side mirrors do come standard. It looks like they're actually sitting on like a shard of either satin chrome if you go with that configuration or gloss black. So the mirror itself almost looks separate from the rest of the design, which is pretty cool. They will be heated with LED integrated turn signals and power folding then as well. As you guys can clearly see, it is folded up on me already. Then take a look down at the wheel configuration. 20 inch arrow wheels will come standard. However, 21 and 22 inch wheel designs are available. And like I was saying previously, Previously in the video if you go with the larger size wheels you will diminish some of that range a little bit maybe 10 miles or so I think I remember on BMW's website but you go with the arrow wheels you're gonna get that max range so I do want to mention that but that pretty much rounds out the side profile let's now go ahead and make our way to the back of the IX and so but now since we are around to the back there is no antenna up top whatsoever which I find was kind of interesting because I always see shark fin antenna or even a small little antenna but there is nothing here on the IX which I actually Actually like it makes a very sleeker look so well done BMW for that rear spoiler with an integrated brake light does come standard rear window wiper I'm not sure how I feel about that maybe that's my constructive criticism this car is so futuristic and yet they stuck the rear window wiper on the rear glass I probably would have tucked that up underneath of the rear spoiler I don't know it just looks slightly out of place on the back but anyways slim LED tail lights of course do come standard added body color accents for the bottom portion of that rear fascia if you go with the sport package again we don't have that so we got a bunch of matte black accents back there. Of course, you got the IX badging. One of my favorite features, I'm not going to be able to show it to you guys, but if you were to want to actually clean that rear view camera, the BMW portion where it's blue and white actually pops out and washes the rear view camera right below it if you wanted to do that. So I thought that was pretty cool. But anyways, this is about the time where I do an exhaust clip. However, of course, with this being an electric vehicle, there is none of that. So let's go ahead and make our way to the interior of the IX. All right, so now since we are around to the back of the IX, when it comes to opening that rear lift gate, there is a button on the key fob that is one way. It is a power lift gate, by the way, so you don't actually have to lift anything. There's also a button on the driver's side door then as well. But once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 35.5 cubic feet behind that second row if that was not enough space there is a 40 20 40 split there's actually some buttons in the cargo area to go ahead and fold that down if you wanted to bumping that up to 77.9 cubic feet so actually a decent amount of space there also in that cargo area you will of course find led cargo lighting there is a cargo cover back there there are some chrome plated tie down anchors there is a grocery bag hook and actually if you lift up underneath the cargo floor you're going to find a decent amount of in-floor storage and of course that's typically where you're going to put your charging core cords and cables then as well. But then make your way to the rear legroom that is going to come in at 38.9 inches. So for reference, I am an even six feet tall. This is how much space I have back there. Rear ventilation of course does come standard and actually four zone climate control comes standard, meaning both passengers can actually set their own temperatures back there as well, which is pretty cool. Rear center armrest with cup holders does come standard as well. And there's actually four phone charging ports back there, two on each of the back side of the front seat. So both passengers back there have two phone charging ports they can charge their devices with. Kind of interesting positioning of those charging ports. So I don't think I've seen them in that particular location before. But now, let's go ahead and make our way up to the front seat. Sensitec upholstery does come standard. That actually is what we have today. Stone gray microfiber wool blend is available for an additional $500. That actually looks pretty cool. Perforated leather goes for $2,450. Heated front seats coming standard. Power adjustable front seats coming standard as well. And those power adjustable seat buttons can be found on the driver's side door as opposed to the seat itself so a little bit of a difference there ventilated front seats go for five hundred dollars if you wanted that and overall actually seating was plenty comfortable and i like how they're all kind of one piece meaning the headrests are asphyxiated to the rest of the seat as well so it's kind of a one piece design which i personally like and again it was plenty comfortable then make our way to the steering wheel i can't really call it a steering wheel it is a steering hexagon because there are six sides you got the top the bottom and kind of two angles on each side so it is not not a steering wheel it is a steering hexagon but it is tilt and telescoping it is power adjustable coming standard it is leather wrapped and again 
I love the hexagon shape. I actually found it perfectly fine driving it, so I was a big fan. Then make our way to the startup. Let me start by showing you guys the key here. You got your BMW logo on the one side, which doubles as the lock button. Then the rest of your buttons are gonna be on the side of the key being unlocked and that button to pop the rear hatch there. But it is all keyless entry with a push button start, meaning just leave your key in the pocket and everything's gonna automatically unlock for you and lock for you when you walk away as well. But also if you download the BMW app, you actually have that same functionality, meaning you don't actually have to put your phone up to the door handles or anything like that. Just keep it in your pocket. And when it senses that BMW app is present, it's gonna automatically open up for you, which is great because that means you don't have to get anything out when it's raining out. So that's what I personally love about that feature. But anyways, in this case, I'm just gonna put my phone on the brake and press that engine start button located kind of just to the upper left of that circular dial there. But then once started up, it does make a pretty cool sound. Gauges are super cool, super futuristic then as as well and the gauges are completely adjustable for example let's say i put it in sport driving mode it's going to change a lot of the colors and the entire look of those gauges which i thought was pretty cool and also same thing goes for that efficient driving mode if you were to change it to that it's going to give you a bunch of blue hues there's a fairly large digital readout front and center again everything is also projected onto your windshield and it's the same thing when you change the driving modes the colors on the windshield projection are also going to change which i found was pretty cool but essentially it's completely adjustable it's got everything you could possibly want it's a 12.3 inch digital gauge cluster but now let's go ahead and make our way to overall interior quality a panoramic eclipsing Sky Lounge roof does come standard. That is pretty cool. Auto dimming rear view mirror and driver's side mirror as well. You don't always get the driver's side mirror, so I wanted to emphasize that. Universal garage door openers come standard on the bottom portion of that rear view mirror, which is up to three different garage doors, and it's a frameless rear view mirror, by the way, as well. Titanium bronze accents is gonna be the standard configuration. There are some other configurations, though, as well. One of the coolest things is to actually open up the doors, there is a button as opposed to an actual door handle on the inside so simply just press the button it's going to open up a little bit for you and then you just press it the rest of the way so a little bit different than most other bmws so far to date multicolor ambient lighting of course coming standard and they did that brilliantly i like the little ambient lighting strip just by the windows on every single door that is a very good placement of that i definitely like that design wireless phone charger does come standard you do have crystal accents available not just for the adjustable seat settings but also the circular dial but i like ours too it's a nice glass last circular dial so it looks very high end another really cool thing about the interior here is there's not actually a divider between the passenger side and the driver's side here so you could store maybe a purse up there or something like that so there's just extra floor space or extra cargo space up front here which is pretty cool just above that you have your dual cup holders you also have a 12 volt power outlet a couple phone charging ports that's actually where you're going to find your wireless phone charger as well and there is actually a little slot just in front of the circular dial where you can actually place your cell phone where it's going to stand upright so did like that as well but overall interior quality is absolutely wonderful they did a heck of a job with the ambient lighting in this thing as well but now let's make our way to one of the coolest things that really where everything is located here on the ix and that is going to be the infotainment screen it is a curved 14.9 inch colored touchscreen display of course coming with bluetooth and audio streaming android auto apple carplay factory navigation system and my personal favorite in all bmws is experience modes so that's going to completely change everything about this from the ambient lighting to the gauge clusters to just about everything so that is pretty fun to play around with i'll definitely say that you can also actually hold these icons and then they're going to be selected and then you can drag them around to relocate them wherever you want so again bmw is making extremely customizable whatever you want this main screen to look like you can do that so that's pretty cool of course you can check out your radio information there's three different sound systems the standard one is going to be 205 watts which is a hi-fi sound system with 12 speakers Next is going to be the convenience pack sound system. It goes for $2,300 again, but that gives you an 18 speaker Harman Kardon sound system with 655 watts. That's actually the one we have today. We're going to test that out here in a second, but then is going to be my favorite sound system of all time. or the brand, I should say. Bowers and Wilkins is going to give you a 30 speaker Bowers and Wilkins surround sound system with 1650 watts and diamond dome tweeters. So a lot going on with that sound system, but I am excited to test out the Harman Carden that we have here today. So what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and turn on the radio, see what we got playing today, and let's test out the clarity of this one. Wow, 
Yeah, I was talking to one of the BMW salespeople with before I even got in this car, before I started testing it out. He said the sound system was wonderful. I was like, it's Harman Kardon. I mean, I've heard them before, but that feels like that's probably the best Harman Kardon sound system I've heard to date. Specifically, the bass. I feel like the subwoofers are within the seats. I could be wrong here, but I don't think I am. I feel like they're in the seats because that was... 100% rubbling my seats. It felt like a massaging seat function with the amount of bass that was coming through the seats. That was incredible sound system. Still not as good as the Bowers and Wilkins, but that was wonderful. You were 100% not going to be disappointed with that Harman Kardon sound system. But anyways, last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on the infotainment screen is when you do put the IX in reverse, you will find a rear view camera coming standard, taking up the majority of the screen because the rest of it is going to be taken up by the 360 degree panoramic view monitor, which you can actually touch the little camera icons there on the screen. And that's going to give you different views as well, which is always, it's going to lead us into safety. And so to start front side, side current airbags do come standard in the back you're gonna have latch, AKA lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats, rear child door locks, tire pressure monitoring system, but also coming standard, front and rear parking sensors, acoustic pedestrian detection, meaning when you're in reverse, the car is gonna make a noise so people know that your car is actually on because it's an electric car, so there's no engine noises or anything like that. Frontal collision warning, blind spot detection, lane departure warning, speed limit recognition, and dynamic radar cruise control then as well. So overall, when it comes to my final thoughts, really the highlight for me is the insane acceleration. Zero to 60 and 4.4, it doesn't feel like that. It feels like zero to 60 and 3.4, if I'm being honest. The acceleration, is breathtaking, especially from a standstill. Great ride quality actually as well. So I have had absolutely no issues. It feels like a luxury vehicle in this thing. Great interior quality without a doubt. Very futuristic design as well. Love the ambient lighting. I probably could keep going on and on. This thing is definitely my kind of vehicle. And this steering wheel is a hexagon. That is one of my favorite parts as well. I actually loved driving a hexagon instead of a steering wheel. It's a steering hexagon, which is pretty cool. But anyways, let me know what you guys think of the new IX in the comments section below. And that is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen if you want to see what's coming next on the channel before it actually gets to YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're in the new car reviews. That is what we do here on this channel. After all, do appreciate you guys watching more than you know, and I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold.